There he is. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Thanks for your patience. I've been I've been using you know back to back calls this morning, and I used the twenty minutes I had to jump in the water, and uh, it was cold, cold, but so good. <laughs> so how are you liking uh, Vancouver Island? Well, it's good to be back. I mean, it's 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 just such a gorgeous spot. Um, I have a, a lot of friends here and just grounding into the rock, grounding into the water. Mm. It feels good. What mm. about you? Oh, I'm, I'm doing great. I'm uh, in the middle of many things. And uh, one of them, I think, as you know, is I'm, I'm working with LaCiel a little bit to try to figure out uh, a program with some other sort of systems architects. And, nice. And looking, and part of what I wanted to talk to you today was was a little bit into your experience with LCL and, and looking at how, how would you see it being involved and knowing more of the culture, knowing more of the process? I mean, I'm coming from the outside and I know they've been together for a number of years and I know they want to make some big changes. Mm. But I'm just wondering from your point of view, what would you suggest to be a methodology for the teams that perhaps hasn't been used or needs to be used? That's an interesting conversation to have. Yeah, for sure. I'd, I'd be down to talk about that. We just today, actually, my my subgroup, we had a meeting, and yesterday was like the monthly the Seattle Holistic Vision Symposium kind of crew meeting. So yeah, I'd I'd, I'd love to talk about that. What do you, um, what have you already put together? Like, what's the frame? The framework so well, I don't go off the charts with it. Well, I, no, I, I wouldn't. I don't really want to put that forward yet. Um, to, like I'd rather sort of do a bit of a needs analysis from your point of view and, and get some better understanding. Okay, gotcha. I'll tell you a little bit later on, but I don't want to let the cat out of the bag too. I mean, we're, we're just... yeah. it's a very secret plan as I can tell from your screen. Yes. I mean, that's also behind the scenes, but that's behind the bigger scenes. And then I want to, I'd like to sort of craft into your podcast and what you're doing and sort of look at, you know, like in LCL and like they, they attracted so many sort of high impact people and each of you has something that could really help the whole but may not be organized together in such a manner that utilizes sort of like the functions or the powers or superpowers that every person is bringing in there and so so i'd like to kind of like go from lacl and then move into your own uh expression and then see what you're doing and then just see perhaps how to link what you're doing into the very secret plan in, in, in a different way than perhaps you may you may know. Cool. So you want to hear what I'm what I have to say about kind of what's what's gathering in the LCL circle, like what how I how I see the process? Yeah, yeah. Let's start there. Hmm. Well, I think I just want to context that that I, it's not. I, I mean, that's kind of obvious. It's it's not just my perception that that matters in that context, I guess, but because I'm just one, I'm in one subgroup. I'm not part of, of the initial founding members. And I, I know a lot of them for a long time now. And I've, I've been at, a, at different kinds of meetings and, and supported them over the years. So, so I'll give my best to, to do it justice. Um, I think overall, there's, there's a really great feeling of connection or, 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 or belonging together and a um, yeah like almost like what you said there's a sense of that there's a lot of gold in that cohort of let's say 144 or 200 people depending on how, how many you count of, of, of who's there and but there's there's often this feeling of like nothing tactile gets taken away like nothing actually gets well nothing is maybe a little much but um, very little gets created meaning like there's there's coming together there's allyship there's a lot of support kind of behind the scenes but through the vehicle that lacl is i think at times there is this feeling that there could be more that comes out of it and so my sense is there's a lot of um there there, there are individual practices that people have that i think um you know, I'm, I'm important to create kind of a deeper connection with one's internal kind of uh, center with, with maybe an indigenous practice or indigenous 
lineage that people are connected to or, or, or a medicine path. But then there's not really a collective cohesive practice that this circle has where it's like, we're coming together because of this and, and we're practicing that. And because of these two things, we're ready for output X. And so the output part is really, I think the biggest lack so far in this larger circle is that there's a lot of hope, a lot of um, uh, energy, a lot of connection, but then really when it comes to what are we co-creating into the world, it's, it's like, it continues to feel like we could be doing so much more. And maybe that's a little critical because even just getting all these amazing people together and, and really um, linking each other up and, and, and being so, like, you know, having like a, a global community of us, I think that's worth something. And, and you know, what, what happened earlier this year in Davos, for example, in, in, um, in Switzerland, at the World Economic Forum, you know, annual meeting, it was really great that there was like a subgroup um, of the, the CL circle, um, bringing in spirituality and spiritual practices into a, a meeting like Davos, which, you know, is the first time and pretty unique in, in that in that specific way. And so there is there are things happening and there are bigger things happening, but I think there's just, there is more possible. And so that cohesion is somehow lacking and that clarity of how do we stay in touch in an effortless way, like in a playful way, in a way that is, you know, um, beyond the, the liking each other on Instagram or like creating another account or that's kind of lacking. And so it's a little bit, maybe the tools we're using, but I think it's also that there's no shared practice or no shared clarity. And then the decision-making processes at large I feel sometimes we're talking in circles and not necessarily daring to make steps forward, but more so making sure that everyone feels good. And that's a challenge for me personally, sometimes at this point, because I feel like um, only f wanting to make sure that everyone feels good isn't, isn't really how it works because, you know, this is a revolution. And so, we can't necessarily um, prevent that someone will feel hurt for a moment of time. That doesn't mean that that, that person should stay hurt or that we can't have practices to reconcile that again. But, but like, you know, the world and the old paradigms and old systems around us that are set up, they, they hurt people and the planet all the time, nonstop. And so in order to, to change that and to evolve that, I think we need to be able to look at difficult um, contexts and, and, and be able to discuss difficult topics and, and then from there take real action um, coming into alignment and coming into synchronous, synchronous steps over and over again but so that process isn't really happening yet that's why I'm I'm giving my best to describe it okay I, I have a question sort of knowing where uh, we may be heading in the future a bit do you think the teams could take in a more sophisticated structure where roles are more defined and there's more of an operating system for the teams to use to let's say get more outputs or get or get larger uh, tasks done together well yes is the short answer um i think again you could challenge that as if getting tasks done is the only thing that brings value but i think it's one of the key pieces that brings value in this context and so yeah um and i and i don't i get i don't think getting tasks done is probably the, the best wording or like yeah higher goals or like let's say set up an actual business build an actual prototype uh get something done as you said that's a lot more tangible and a larger use of all the gifts of the people involved do you think that's possible? Or I totally think it's possible. And I think it's it's happening in, in smaller parts and it's happening in like little projects and it's happening in, in certain gatherings. But I think overall, in order to create this as like, you know, making more impact and bringing more positive change to the world, I think, yeah, it needs more, it needs more cohesion or structure or operating systems that, that are reliable and that, that support people, right? If in some regards it's cash flow and money and, and being able to pay people in other regards, it's just creating, um, you know, more like reliable structures and which, which you can like uh, hold people accountable uh, or simply the choice-making process. It's a little bit of all of those. 
do you think people look towards this as um, perhaps a process to getting maybe where they'd rather go in terms of their own making a living process or that's a great question their life I don't think everyone um, we'd have to actually pull people to really be have a clear answer there but I'm, I'm sure that um, in each group there's a few people that would definitely want that um, you know I think for me personally if if there was a way and, and I've, I've tried this a few times with with the core group of Lucille to talk about um, how what I'm doing could service and support the larger Lucille infrastructure and, and well the storytelling and the narrative of it with you know um, uh, a certain kind of cash flow underneath it so if you know if and I still, um, we're right now in a conversation like that. I would love to create a, the storytelling or co-create the storytelling and narrative around what's what's happening, um, but I, I can't do it for free. Not just to not not just to pay myself, but also to like pay the teams and the um, the teams and the people to make to make it really count, right? Because just doing something to come together and volunteer, I think, in this current reality, which relies so heavily on money and business. And, and, and I think between you and I, it's already clear that that doesn't need to be the case forever on planet Earth, but it's the case right now. And so negating it makes no sense. Mm -hmm. And so in order to really connect with that reality and in that reality for people, I think it, it, it just makes sense to offer maybe for some people that to be a living wage or a living income. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so do you find the teams are thinking in business terms? Are they thinking about making a business? Are they thinking about building products? Like, do they language that? Do you know about? I don't think anyone is really thinking about making products. Um, as far as I'm understanding, I think some people are maybe thinking about business. Um, but what is business other than a group of people creating something of value and then, right, including that into a money matrix. But I think there's a lot of, you know, groups and projects around creating value. Um, not all of that value needs to be a business, um, but definitely that that's that's in the space as well. Is like, how do we create change that has impact and touches people's lives? That is e either not a business and just creates value and touches people's lives, or is a business and then self perpetuates and grows bigger. And so I think no one within the Lasiel circle the context of those two hundred ish people has really really done that yet. It's it's more like a few conversations and then it kind of loses momentum again. So if you look at the map behind me and looking at uh, the, the relationship between let's say potential new paradigm and the old paradigm and the old paradigm being based upon fear, new paradigm being based upon love and that in the moment you make a choice about which one to go in. I mean, how I see it is, is to assist people and businesses to move from here to here is fundamentally uh, the future process that Luciel and other organizations I think are looking at in terms of co-creating a new paradigm, co-creating a new way of interacting together. Mm -hmm. And that the 13 teams are looking at different aspects of society and looking to see you know, how, if you were organizing the entire planet, how would you do it? You know, if we were redesigning the whole system, because I think that's what's to ha what has to happen, right? I mean, Buckminster Fuller said that you can't you can't go into the old paradigm and hope they're going to change. Mm -hmm. Like totally, you, you have to go into the new paradigm and actually design systems that are based upon, let's say, you know, natural law or compassion or uh, having human beings be treated rightly, right? And so I was wondering then, how does that kind of connect into your podcast and your philosophy about the new paradigm? Like, what are you doing personally right now about that? When you say that, are you referring to the model behind you or the, the or Lucille? Yeah, I'd say more towards the model behind me. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, most tactile thing I could mention to you is that, you know, so a podcast, um, right now with, with Green Planet, Blue Planet, and basically 
I'm at a place now where I've been doing this for a while. Um, there, I, I'm, I'm at a, I would call it like a threshold point where there's, there's enough people tuning in and enough people knowing what I'm doing and like listening to either all of the episodes or some of them. And there's, there's, there's attention, right? And so at the attention threshold, the old paradigm um, pathway is to create sponsorships based on seconds of ads sold, right? So let's say, um, if your company wants to um, talk to my audience or talk to the people that are that are doing this with me, then 30 seconds is X and 60 seconds is Y. And that makes no sense to me personally. I, I, I skip all the ad blocks and all the podcasts I listen to um, as much as possible. And um, it's just, I don't want to really charge anyone in this specific ma matrix. It makes no sense to me personally. And so I've been the last two, three months, I've been thinking about, okay, how, how do I, how do I create a business around this and bring in a substantial cash flow that allows me to pay people that help me make the production value bigger that, and better and, and, you know, create, create more content around each episode as well. So that the storytelling just becomes more diverse and more complex in a way that then more people can receive it and engage with it. Right. Because that's what, that's what one of my motivations behind green planet, blue planet is at this point. I mean, there's multiple motivations, but one of them is to, to invite into storytelling and invite into conversations and dialogues that, you know, relate back to a green planet with biodiversity and a blue planet of healthy waters. And so a new paradigm way to do this in my eyes is, and that's what I'm in conversations with, with a few organizations at the moment, um, is to do this in partnership with brands or organizations that have a shared similar interest. So we're talking business. So that needs to be someone who also has a product or also has, you know, a sales cycle, but beyond their sales cycle and their product, their interest is to do this for, you know, um, a thriving planet. And so those companies exist. I mean, if it is a Patagonia, someone who, something that maybe everyone would mention at this point, or, or, you know, is if it is, um, a brand that doesn't have a name yet, but that really wants to, emerge into this space that's that's who i'm talking to right now is kind of these these companies and brands that aren't um aren't startups anymore because there needs to be a cash flow to actually have the desire to create marketing and create create deep dive content but that aren't quite as big as, as maybe patagonia itself and um, not to say that i wouldn't want to or i wouldn't would love to work with patagonia at some point as well um but yeah so so that's more towards what i would say the future of social business or of, of the new paradigm where, where love meets business, where love meets making money, right? So could Luciel, let's say, be a brand that is along that line? And, and to me, what they, what they have is if you're just one of, let's say, 144 of the people, like there's so much intellectual capacity, there's so much knowledge, there's so many people with things to teach that that's a, a massive resource, isn't it? You're Elijah, you're you're speaking words out of my mind. So I've had this conversation a few times with um, with Peter in earlier stages earlier this year about you know narrative and how important it is. And then just recently with Jesse actually. So like very much, yes, 100 percent I would love to co-create this with Lesiel and Lesiel being one of those organizations that basically hires me and green planet blue planet to create a six months content series with six months is 24 weeks right 24 weeks roughly um would be four well one episode a week would be four episodes a month that would be 24 episodes so six mm -hmm. months equals 24 episodes in this way of thinking uh, plus minus one or two of course if we wanted to do a bit more but so if we had a six months co collaboration in which we create 24 deep dive podcasts like one hour conversations could be round tables could be one-on-ones hosted through green planet blue planet co-created with lasiel um you know pay paid for an amount x that i mean I've, I've, i have a whole pitch deck around that but i'm, I'm not going to throw this into this conversation maybe but paid for amount X. And then what you get on the output part is not just the main podcast and the video, um, but you get like 
a three minute video of that, a one minute video of that, a, a few images out of that, you get, um, you know, uh, the show notes that are like article style written up. Um, there's, there's, we could engage, you know, we could, we could literally create like a whole Facebook group with, with not with LCL members, but with, um, with people that are getting this about what holistic visions for planet earth means to them. Right. So that there's basically out of this, as you said, this intellectual, um, cohort of like just amazing insight and, and connectivity to spirit and the earth and, and all that we could create a narrative and a storytelling that for multiple months goes across all channels if it's YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, et cetera, to reach hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of people with, you know, short clips and long format interviews that come back to basically on the inside who Le Ciel as my client in that sense, or as my ally or in, in, in Green Planet, Blue Planet as their ally, who we choose to have those interviews with. So that could be anyone from, um, you know, the Le Ciel founding members to someone who is part of the 144 um, members of the Holistic Visions to an, an external expert that we'd like to interview or bring into a, a round table. And we could do this about topics like the future of money, as well as uh, is sacred sites or as well as um, how to create global community and so that's something that I'm personally like honestly Le Ciel is on my like short list of the top 10 groups that I would love to work with mm -hmm. but here's here's the ca ca caveat I've, I've been you know being I've been an ally for for and with Le Ciel for many years now and have done all this with my time and for free as a volunteer because I believe in the mission and it, it, that same spirit talks to me, you know. But at this point, to, to make it bigger, to make it larger, to have it really impact people and be in people's consciousness, I can't do it for free because mm -hmm. I, I literally can't do it for free. I, and I, I'm not in the position where I can pay it out of my pocket. And so it has to be paid for. And of course, there could be a sponsor um, that's external to Lysiel or it could be part of their budget as they raise funds. But yeah, I would, I would fucking love to do that. That would be so much fun. Mm. Now, which team are you on? Uh, group eight, that's Seeding Global Community. Seeding Global Community. Now, have you talked to many of the other teams like, are you in contact with the other teams in any way, or is that at times? Yeah. At times, do, do you find there's, let's say, other people who are marketers that are on each team? Like, like usually on a team, there's some people who've got the great ideas around getting it into the world, and they're just different than marketers are, are different. I mean, the reason you're doing so well, I think, in your show is that you must have some aptitude for distribution and getting, making smart moves to to get your product known. Right. And, and those are very different from researchers or, or operational people or. Yeah, no, totally. I mean, this is something I've, I've been doing, you know, for, for a while. Um, market marketing or communication or how, how to get into people's consciousness. Because um, I, I was just wondering if we sort of grabbed one person from each of the 13 teams and created a marketing team. Of the people who then looked at more more from the money side and the uh, exposure side because to me if you raise five million or ten million or twenty million dollars there's, there's lots of money out there that goes to good causes but it's it's it seems that so much of the money goes to stupid old paradigm mechanisms that won't work hmm. and, and well so, so much of the money does go to, to old mechanisms that you know are, are great tax write-offs that's for sure um I think it's a matter of like you, the, the non-for-profit model might might be might be a bit of, of a, a a hurdle because you, if this was all like a social business that had profit centers where an investor would say, okay, I'm investing out of goodwill, but also ten years later or five years later or three years later, I have a, an ROI on it, um, that might make it easier um, for some people to invest into. I don't know if we need a marketing team, but 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 I hear what you're saying, and I don't know if each team has someone with that skill. It doesn't feel like it or look like it from what I know so far, but certainly in some teams there are other people that um, know how to market things as well. Is you you know that uh, 
like this map behind me is a structure yep. for, called a share knowledge community and the illuminators uh, I can't even, are right the, there yeah. are the marketers and so it's looking at like looking at more the specific gifts of each person and looking at you know on each team there's people who are is a coach let's say on each team there's somebody who's more entrepreneurial on each team there's someone who's more of a healer and and so if you start to combine the teams like there's 13 teams and these are more around topic areas right so they're looking at water or they're looking at the air or they're looking at the, the sacred sites but each of those teams let's say has a researcher or could have a researcher each of those teams could have a marketer and so it's kind of like looking at a, a matrix as opposed to just these 13 silos. And so you start to look at it as a larger shared knowledge community. You look at it as a larger organism. This has 144 people. And I think that we, we spoke about that before at some point, yep. looking at your, totally own, your own people and going, you know, you, you, how many people have you uh, interviewed so far? Um, roughly around 250. So, I mean, that's a lot of people and, you know, they may know each other, but my guess is you interviewed them, but there was no process to connect them together onto teams. There was no process to go, wow, if this fit with this and this person hit this for this person did this, you know, we'd have something so much better uh, if we did that. Yeah, 100 percent. And I think, you know, this is this is one I'm, I'm, I'm so with you on this. This is one of the big challenges for <laughs> the forces of good on this planet is that that we're, we're just not as um, well organized as, as possible. And so like, yes, if my, my honest answer to this in regards to green planet, blue planet is it's, it's, it's a matter of resources. Like I would love to hire someone to do this with me or for, for me um, because it's just a little too much, or maybe also not entirely my skill set. Um, for me alone and so comes back to cash flow comes back to how do I fund myself who are my sponsors right and so I think that's possibly the same everywhere that I've looked so far uh, including Le Ciel from what I know that it's a matter of like what skills are right like you can look at it from two angles like one is what is the ideal matrix kind of the angle that I think you're looking at it from and then the other angle would be what are the skills that are present mm. and then from there let's spiral outward right and mm. and so from the skills that we have at the core let's from there make make a larger circle and then once we have in a larger circle other skills available or maybe more money available that we can buy in some skills now we can create those 12 hubs or wheels um i think both ways are very viable it's just a matter of like starting somewhere mm. because i i think the the problem is that, you know, we, we don't have... I love all your backgrounds. It's awesome. <laughs> we don't have the infrastructure and the marketing as an independent contractor or an independent entrepreneur that the corporations have. We, we don't have that type of infrastructure where you can get an idea, bring together a product team and pop it out there. And it didn't cost you two weeks and, you know, your ability to make your money kind of thing. So the whole idea of the shared knowledge community is having that infrastructure that is set up so that, you know, you're not doing your legal, you're not doing your accounting, you're not doing your marketing, you're not doing all the things you don't want to do, but you are doing those really high end things that you're great at doing. And as a result of that, you're, uh, able to attract a higher degree of wealth mm -hmm. and you're also building over a longer period of time you know again an infrastructure that's good for us all and i think what la ciel has is they they've been guided to bring the people together they've been guided to bring these people that that care that want to change the world totally that have, have dedicated their heart and their time towards whatever their solutions are and now they've come together and and I mean, they basically said that we have 10 years. If we can't figure something out, like within the next 10 years, our, our species may be toast. So to me, it is. Well, we're totally figuring it out, though. <laughs> yeah, I, I hear you. Yeah. I'm going to just make some tea because I, you know, still a little freezing from the, the ocean. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I think this is what Le Ciel's mission is, is to bring those people together and to 
well, to map them out, to find them, to help them connect. And then, you know, I'm like, in a way, an extension of that with the Green Planet, Blue Planet is, is like, that's what I see as part of my mission too, is to like continuously map out who are these epic game changers, interview them, understand them better, get to know them. And then, you know, it's sooner or later, I'm going to create an, a certain kind of Green Green Planet, Blue Planet summit as well, right? Where it's like, um, I just had a conversation about this earlier today with I don't want to create all this alone. I want to do this in partnerships with other amazing organizations. So let's just say there's a green planet summit. That's all about planting trees and regenerating soil. And then there's a, a blue planet summit about clean water and clean oceans, right? And bringing the experts in both of those fields together and then bringing the audience and all the people that actually want to learn about that or want to be active about this. Mm -hmm. To be honest though, well, wait, let me, let me just check in. Does that make sense? Do, do you see yeah. that vision? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. To be honest, what I, I think, you know, I, and I'm a dreamer and I'm definitely like an idealist in many ways, um, just putting water into the, the thing there. Um, but I think it comes back down to why are corporations so much more swift and able because there is a traffic flow. Well, there's a cash flow of money behind it, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, I think a lot of people with good hearts and good intentions, they do as much as they can. And at some point they burn out. Mm. And I've seen this a lot in myself and others. And you can do that for, for maybe a year, maybe, maybe two, maybe even three. But at some point, if you don't meet reality where reality is at, or like the current, you know, like how do you pay your rent? How do you pay your food? How do you, how do you just, you know, how do you get those, those glasses you're wearing? Well, you, you have to pay money for them. And so if, if, your, if your joy or your heart's um, work, like let's say what Lesiel is doing, isn't paying for that, then you need to do that as well as you're doing the other thing. And so that makes no sense. So bringing this together, I think is a very, very vital way. And I mean, fundraising in non-for-profits is definitely one step. And I don't think it's wrong. I just think non-for-profit makes little sense in a for-profit world. Mm -hmm. So, because you can still raise investment in a for-profit company. So creating a social business kind of structure around something like La Ciel, and I probably would have tried to do that from the, from the beginning, to be honest, where, you know, if those 12 groups are doing what they're doing, but two of those groups create a real cash flow and they create like a real business, now suddenly the all 12 hubs are so much more prosperous, can do so much more, have so much more energy, right? And, and now, now suddenly there's, there's no excuse, there's no limitation because it's just all possible because you have the right people with the right intention and you have money. And so I think figuring that out has been um, kind of like the crux of a lot of spiritually minded or spiritually um, aimed uh, initiatives because there's this this old illusion that spirituality and money don't go together mm. and I think I think that's at the heart of the matter of all across the planet is you know how can good people create a new world using the money system that has existed and I think fundamentally what's happening with COVID right now it's a bit of a cover-up to stop this massive sort of bank destruction that's happening in the background. Like there, there's something going on that isn't quite being shared because the, the mar you know, the, the, the markets are so inflated with funny everything, right? It's not based upon reality. And I think what's happening with, with the new cryptocurrencies is when you can put something on the blockchain, it's, there's a reality there. There's something that yeah. can be built. So I, I think that all of the money at some point is gonna, go into these cryptocurrencies in some manner and part of what we're going through is this is this transformation for that and i think that there's new currencies coming out right the, the whole idea of currency has been transformed because of blockchain and because of you know what, what's what's occurred and i'm just wondering about what you learned about that and how you see that as perhaps a way to fund new paradigm business yeah, that's a great question. Um, let me just go away from the the water the water boiler as it boils. Um, what what I've learned about this is probably a lot and by far not enough. 
Um, yeah, it, it, it <laughs> sorry, I'm trying not to go into the what's happening behind COVID kind of uh, part of this conversation just because it will like trail us off in a different direction. But like, yes, if you were to um, ask me personally, I think it would make sense to gather around a community tool that's also a currency. So namely seeds or join seeds, right? I think seeds would be a great play for Le Ciel to use as a platform and to, to you know, we're right now, we had this conversation about using this 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 platform called uh, Imaginal Collective, which looks beautiful and, and could be amazing. Imaginal Collective, and um, but I'm not sure if that's the best play because I think the best play allows everyone to interact with this new kind of blockchain-based currency infrastructure. And so Seeds, who is also already part of the uh, the CL infrastructure, uh, I think it would make a lot of sense to have these, these key players in the LaCL circle onboard into the seeds infrastructure and create a form of, so all of these 12 hubs, the way they meet each other and connect with each other, what if that happened within the seeds app? And so instead of hanging out on Facebook, we would commit as 200 people to now hang out in the seeds app, help make that app better, earn tokens for that and learn to spend them and, and somehow create our own kind of flow of, of currency. I think that would make a lot more sense. Mm. And yes, it's, it's, it's edgy and it's new and, and not everyone will get it. And the app sometimes still breaks down and um, sure. But, but that's part of what we would commit to is that we're like, like a beta testing group, which ultimately now we're, we're committing to do that in another group, which is Imaginal Collective, which I, might work out just fine um but i think it would make sense to bring this into the, the crypto and blockchain space personally mm. um yeah and then and then it, it may it might go beyond that but that's kind of a might maybe the first part of the answer because mm. because what i'm thinking is that there's a there's a huge potential here and Again, I think a lot of that isn't realized because of the lack of money or the lack of, of people thinking that it's not going to make money. Because I think you know, a lot of people will contribute at the beginning of something if they think they're going to get a reward at the end. And so the, the, if, if you can get like 150 people to actually donate their time towards something, that's a lot of brain power that can actually build something that in the end can reward everybody, but you have to sort of get everyone's commitment and then you have to have the right plan and strategy in place to make sure that each team is going to get something that is, is gonna create something and get something in return at some point. And I'm, I'm just wondering about the commitment level of people who are involved. Well, so this is, this is always like, uh, I wouldn't say a problem, but it's like one of those bottlenecks, right? So the commitment, we can't go back into the past and change it. So it makes very little sense to lament about anything that hasn't happened. Mm. But I think that's where, I think that's where the biggest, that's where there is like potential, maybe a little wasted is that we just, you know, pre COVID, you know, how many people just went to events in order to go to events. And it was just like, I'm part of another event and this is amazing. Mm. And, and so no, no real criticism on that, but I think there's a little bit of that. And then taking that commitment, I mean, I've been in some other people too, in so many group calls with LaCL people and in our group eight and so forth, but then nothing tactile gets taken away or gets built out of it. And so my commitment at some point too was like, well, you're telling me that you don't have money to incentivize me or us further you're telling me you don't have money to build more narrative or narrative pieces or marketing pieces to bring more storytelling about the holistic visions out there and i've done a, quite a few interviews with the whole crew for free and then which obviously i love doing so there's that's 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 a good it's a good thing mm. but but so they, they there isn't really a reward for the commitment which is a problem right if the commitment doesn't have an incentive 
and your objective doesn't have an incentive, then why am I doing it in the first place? Just because I know it's the right thing to do and I'm following my spirit guide. Well, that is true for some of us, but, but, but that's a pretty far-fetched hope, you know? Mm. So, so you can't really build this entirely on that hope. So I think objectives and incentives have to align. Mm. And then, then um, that commitment and incentives also have to align. Mm. And that's not really yet happened in that circle. And so I do think there's quite a few people with like powerful energy, powerful um, insights, powerful connections, and some people with really powerful commitments. And there's still a lot possible. And, and, and I, I do believe that whole journey is just starting, even though, it, you know, Lysiel has been around now for a bit. But if there's not an aligned incentive or a way to bring it onto a, a, a currency system or a blockchain way to track it, I think we're, we're ultimately just kind of wasting time a little bit. Mm. I mean, I, I guess what I see is that it's kind of like Gandalf showing up at Bilbo's house and then the dwarves show up and there's this adventure going on and, the, and, and there's kind of like, first they want to go get their gold, but they also have to go kill smog right? You, you don't get the gold until you kill Smog the dragon. And there's these 13 dwarves who are going, okay, well, we'll, we'll get this wizard to help us out and get this, uh, this little thief to come along with us. And, you know, if let's say we have in mind that we, if we don't make major changes, if we don't come up with some new solution within the next 10 years, our species is toast. That's, that's a bit of a, more of an incentive looking at the collective vision of what is necessary versus our own personal needs. But I, I know that most people, you know, don't really think at the species, save the species level with what they're doing in their own personal lifestyle. But at some point we need that in order to overcome, let's say the inertia of the old paradigm or the, uh, like somebody has to figure out a new methodology of doing business on the planet. And, and, and personally, because I've spent a lot of time in that arena, you know, there are people who are committed to that. And right now we've actually got, I think, a, a pretty great team. And we're coming up with something that I think you guys are, are going to really love. Because uh, it's, it is, uh, it's, it's, again, I think of a, a potential birthing of the new paradigm. And, and I'm just wondering about you know, the sense of, you know, if anything new is created, the people who are there at the beginning, like the people who are there at the beginning of YouTube or the people at the beginning of Facebook or the people at the beginning of Windows, you know, that they did quite well, I'll bet, in terms of, you know, committing to the right platform. So right. Why, they, so I, they, they committed to a platform that was completely based on, on making profit, right? So uh, right. that's how they did well. They did well in making profit. And so... Like, could we do both? Could we do real good for the planet, but also all of us do quite well financially or in some way through wealth creation in a new currency? Yeah, I think, I think yes, is a short answer. I think the second part of that answer is we could totally, that's why I said the word social business a few times, uh, create this in a way where it has profit centers that loops back into the current monetary system and then over long, but maybe not within 10 years, but over long, we all know that, you know, the current monetary system in itself is fucked and inflation is taking money away from people as well as, um, <laughs> as well as, you know, wherever all this military spending, the story in itself, right? Is like what the current money system so holds within it that is like really, um, sorry, just plugging back into the proper microphone here. That that's really in itself not not favor some, but but like yeah, we got to start somewhere, and starting somewhere could mean doing well both on impact and 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 on a business sense. I think it is important because look, it comes back to what I said a few minutes ago. Every single person in this context is volunteering their time right now but they're also doing something for their own living to pay their rent, to pay their food. Even if they have all the money they ever needed and all they do is investments, then they still do that, right? Mm. And so 
when you're building a bridge between those two things, again, maybe not everyone would need that. Probably most people are like, well, what I'm doing for a living doesn't need to be connected to Lucille, but creating a bridge between those two would allow more people to commit more energy and time f- more so. Mm. And I think that has been completely missed out from the start on because that, that could have been done from the start. Mm. Um, and now when you tie that into a, an infrastructure like seeds, and then you're basically already transitioning to an alternate uh, currency play or, or, or what, you know, you know, my, um, my beloved partner Lorana is doing, which has been believed, which is now turning into social bank, which is a time currency token. Um, she was at the first holistic vision symposium too. Um, I'll put it in the chat because believe is spelled um, like this and social bank is this. So social bank is Brazil's first B Corp and them, them and, 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 well, Brazil's first B Corp bank. I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't say that right. And Believe is, is the world's largest time exchange platform. Um, and so she, she started the time exchange platform and time exchange is, is a whole other way to make sense of currency. But, but basically these alternative plays, seeds included, they're very close to Lucille and it would be I think the fear might be to get lost in that, you know, mm. to get like, get the whole Lucille group just lost in the seeds universe. I think that's one of the fears, but I think it would be silly not to find the bridges. And so this is how I see Lucille actually is I see Lucille not necessarily so much as a group that needs to create a lot of things, but much more as it's the gravity or the magnetism where some of the key players in the world come together and then help each other create bridges between their different universes with mm-hmm. powerful storytelling. That's where, where me and my thing kind of falls into with powerful currencies, with powerful ways to heal water, with powerful ways to create rights and justice for indigenous people and bring their wisdom back into society. And so Lesiel is just continuously the bridge builder, mm. right? That's, that's what I'm seeing, but, but yeah, I mean, much more yet to happen. Hmm. Well, I, I think we've probably spent uh, a good hour almost on this, and I think it's you've informed me a lot in terms of uh, your perspective from being a LCL member, uh, in terms of going through their process and uh, looking at. I think 2021 is going to be a breakthrough year. I think. Yes. I, I think it's 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 forced us to be as a result of the COVID, as a result of the economic shutdown, or as a result of so many people losing their jobs, as a result of us having to come face to face with, you know, sort of seeming more insanity, that we are going to be pushed to come up with the new solutions. In, in a I manner, agree. Which we don't even know yet. I, uh, I have a fear it's going to get worse before it gets better. Well, it, it already feels better in many ways, and then it all it, it continues to feel worse in, in in other areas, right? So it's like, where are you putting your focus? I think it it definitely will get worse on some levels, and we'll have to still see things break apart before you know. It's like the student in university or in in high school who is like has an exam or a test tomorrow and hasn't studied yet. And it's like, fuck, I have to do something. Let's yeah. do an all nighter. Let's pull an all nighter. And, and it's like that kind of energy is like one minute before midnight and we'll, we'll pull an all nighter and we'll save humanity. And mm. for me, all that makes no sense. It's, it's, it's like, we don't need to save the planet. We, we need to learn to live in harmony with it or otherwise um, the opposite of harmony will come, come through. And that opposite is already coming. It's already coming through. So you know, I think the the incentives are becoming clearer and clearer. And like, yeah, this, you know, Elijah, for me, for me, the way I see it is that a lot of it is 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 like game design. Everything is really a game. You know, there's we're we're infinite spirit in human bodies, and we're all here playing these these games that we say yes to the the rent game, the economic game, the job game, the nation state game. And yeah, some of them make sense historically out of the progression of what games were played on this planet. But we even tell children, oh, time to stop playing your games, time to grow up and play the games the adults play. But really, they're also just games. 
Mm. And so my question is fundamentally like, is it time to play better games? And what are better games? And so the blockchain and crypto world is, is one of the, the answer set that is like, hey, we have some better games that we developed. How can we now make these better games meet reality? And so I obviously don't have a lot of the answers, but I think it's very, very possible. And it takes much less time than, than, we, might, than we might imagine once we're playing the right games. And so the more of us that can say goodbye to the games of destruction and domination and separation, and the more of us that even though it's difficult, say yes to um, the, ch the new challenge, the new paradigm, right? Mm. Um, I, think, I think that's going to help us quite a bit. However, I'm not personally, I'm not picturing it like, oh, yesterday I said goodbye to the old paradigm and today everything is a rainbow. Like that makes no sense to me because good things usually get born out of challenge, right? And, well, not always, but often. And so saying yes to that challenge, committing to something like Le Ciel, even though it, it, it might be, you know, a lot of volunteer hours in the beginning, I think it's important. And people are already doing this. I know so many amazing people that are already doing this. And my hopes are very, very high because of that. It just, we, we just can't stop until it, you know, really works. And I mean, it would definitely help if we all stop watching the media and the news um, for a while, you know, because then our consciousness wasn't bombarded with all this trash all the time. Mm. I, I'd like to end with a potential offer for you in terms of uh, a process that you and I could engage your community in and to place people on teams in this inflow matrix operating system I've invented and to give them each a position, invite them in within this structure and almost like, again, start a game where they look at, okay, what happens if I took my gift, put it on this universal structure with a whole bunch of super heroes and see what happens. I just say, do, we'll do it once. And I want to show you something. I want to show your people something and see if it, it works. It may not work. It may be insane, but uh, it's, it's like playing basketball for the first time and taking some people out of the stands and going, okay, well, you're going to come here. You're going to be the point guard. You're going to be the shooting guard. You're going to be the center. You're going to be the power forward. And you're going to be the, the swing player. I think that is a great idea. And I think that the Le Ciel team in that sense might be a great one to run a first prototype with because there's very willing people in there. Mm -hmm. So this is a, I know that we wanted to wrap it, but it, it is, this is like a, um, a surprising and somewhat annoying um, inertia point to overcome that because we we all have like private lives with private interests and a job to do and that's why i'm doing quotation marks because it's just another set of games we're playing sometimes it's hard to get people's attention for long enough to be like hey so remember i interviewed you now let's try to play a game together <laughs> and, and so it's not always to my liking that it is that way but it it, it kind of is that way too so from my angle to re-engage the people I've interviewed into like the, the green planet and the blue planet summit or whatever we we're going to call it. It's, it's really about how do I also offer them value that, that there's, that there's not like a feeling of, Oh, that's a waste of my time. Actually. Mm. I don't really believe in wasting time, but, but that's, that's still, that's well, still really. I mean, I, I guess I would offer that, you know, for a lot of people that let's say are at the top of their game or, or really doing well on their own, I think what we all lack or what we all want is we want to create with peers who are at the same level of us. Like what I'm experiencing right now with LCL is I'm with other facilitators that are all systems architects or designers that are you know, at a very high level of their own work. And 
they're masters. And I, you know, and, and all of us are putting our time in right now uh, as a, uh, like you, like as volunteers, but the, the level of the work that's coming out of this is asking the most for me and it's asking the most from each person. And I'm seeing that we're about to build something that's, that's, it's, it's a very high-end architecture. And, you know, it's coming as a result again of, like, like you said, Luciel is bringing us in because there's this higher vision because I, I think that true spiritual guidance is leading us towards this new paradigm. It's a spiritual answer. Yeah. And again, like towards the people I don't know much about, I don't know anything about you know, the full, full amount of people that you've worked with. But it's, it's like, when you see sort of uh, two high-end entertainers or sports figures, or when you see people coming together, sometimes you go, boy, they, I wonder what they would do if they worked together. How would they do if they were an actual team? And some person might be really good at inventing something. Somebody might be good at you know, creating marketing systems, but it, it's, I, I just think the future is about taking very high end people and putting them together on superhero teams to create yeah. super systems. Yeah. And that we are not going to reach that level of potential until we are around these people who are operating at such a high level. Like I find my game has to get better because I'm used to being R&D in my, my room, coming up with my little ideas and you know, I've got all my bad habits and I've got, you know, things which I'm not particularly proud of. And when I'm working with these other people, I realize I can't stay in those ruts. I can't stay in those old patterns. I can't That's stay true. in the old paradigm. I can't, I can't be who I have been if I'm going to reach my potential. Yeah. So I just give that to you in terms of, I, I think, the desire to work with other people on high-end teams, independent, if, even if we're being paid. That, uh, you know, my, uh, Michael Jordan would love to play with uh, Larry Bird. Yeah, 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 yeah. I hear what you're saying. You know, just to play, just to see what it's like because they're, they're both great players and, you know, these guys don't got to worry about money. But uh, I, I just think that there, there's, there's a true higher service that we all have to sort of go to for our species to truly evolve. Yeah, let, let's let's continue to explore this, Elijah. I think there's something there's something coming up. Uh, and 2021 is going to be a breakthrough year. I'm I'm with you on that. Um, thank you so much for for asking me a whole bunch of questions and listening. Well thank you for coming on the very secret plan. And uh, it has been a great honor to have you here and I look forward to any further interactions. Awesome. Bye for now. Ciao, ciao.